Hi there, and welcome to Draw With Me. I'm Danny Gregory, and as we do every Thursday, we gather at our desks, our kitchen tables, um, I don't know, wherever it is you are, we bring along maybe a sketchbook, a pen, some watercolors, some crayons, some markers, whatever it is you want to play with, however you feel like expressing yourself today. And we just do a drawing of some random thing that sometimes I pick and sometimes you pick. Um, and then we just have fun. The idea is not really to have a, a drawing lesson, but it's really more to just have a drawing opportunity. Uh, a little thing on your calendar that says, you know what? I'm going to try and do some kind of a drawing every week with this bald guy on YouTube. And we'll see how it turns out. And if it turns out well, cool. If it doesn't, I'll see you next week and we'll do it again. So um, thank you all for joining me. I see some new people. Here's Marta Arandia, who's joining us for the first time. I'm not sure from where. Um, and what else? Erica is back, our moth ambassador. And um, yeah, and as Beverly points out, we had some beautiful and moving tributes to Anne Frank. Last week, we, we drew some um, quotes, I guess, from, from Anne, and we commemorated her life and her contribution to our species, which was quite immense. And um, some of you chose to do calligraphy, and some of you chose to combine that with portraiture. And some of you just did drawings of Anne. But whatever you did, thank you for doing it. Thank you for sharing it with me. Uh, that's another thing. If you're new to to uh, draw with me, that's one thing we do is we collect your drawings each week and we share them the following week. So thank you all for doing that. Um, Anne Marie is also here for the first time. <clears throat> so thank you for joining us and um, let's see how it goes. Lubricating the mechanism, getting ready to do something cool today. Um, first of all, let me let me tell you a bit about what um, what I have planned and why it is I have it planned. So uh, today has no particular significance beyond the fact that um, I was planning to draw one thing sort of vaguely, and then. JJ and I were standing around in the kitchen and I was telling her that I was thinking of drawing that. And she said, well, why don't you draw a fish? So I was like, well, you know what? If that's what I have to do in order to get dinner, I will draw a fish. But I said, didn't we just draw a fish? Doesn't it seem to you like we just drew fish? Guess what? I look back. We drew fish last September. A year ago, we drew fish. And this year is just like, boom. And it seems like we just did it, and we we should do it again. Fish are fascinating. There's so many different forms of them, and they can be expressive, they can be decorative, they can be slimy, they can be threatening, they can be, I don't know, grilled. There's all kinds of things <laughs> that fish bring up. And so let's let's do some fish today, okay? As always with Draw With Me, if you say, you know what? I don't like fish, I prefer chicken, feel free to draw chicken or whatever it is, a ham sandwich. Anything you want to draw, you can draw. The point is just to draw, to have some fun, to do it. Um, you know, and actually I was thinking back that when we first started Draw With Me, it was really just an opportunity for me to just say, you know what, I feel like drawing right now, I'm going to turn on the camera and see if anybody wants to draw, join me in drawing. And now it's become like a more elaborate thing and more and more people have come and we collect your drawings and we have themes, which is nice. Because a lot of times when you sit to draw, you say, what do, I don't know what to draw, right? It's like the inner eight-year-old. I don't know what, or is that, is that an 11-year-old? I don't know what to draw. So I'm going to solve that for you. Today we're going to draw fish. Martha has... An aquarium full of fish, glowfish, in fact. She seems to be a cat. Something mildly disturbing about a cat having an aquarium full of 
glowing fish. But that's fine. And as Fran reminds us, fish don't exist. You want to know what that means? Google it. You've discussed it ad nauseum. But it is a good thing to, to be reminded of. And as Wilma says, fish calls for watercolor. Thank you, Wilma, for setting this up. Here we go. Today, we're sponsored by Hanamula, specifically by their toned watercolor paper. Uh, Hanamula has done something that I haven't really seen other people do, which is to have watercolor paper that has a light tone to it. They have two different kinds, gray and kind of a tan. And they're both really nice to, to draw on, to do watercolors on. And you'll see me do it today. And in fact, if you would like to see what that is like, we will help you out because Hanamula has graciously um, agreed to give three of you a, an um, a watercolor pad, toned watercolor paper. Um, all you need to do is to write in and tell us that you want it. So here's what you need to do. Write to us. You can email us. You can write to us in the post office box. Sometimes, it, if that takes a bit longer, it's possible. It may not work out, but I love to hear from you, and I love to get letters and all kinds of stuff from you, so feel free to write to our post office box. But if you want to just email, email and say, here's what I want, and here's why I want it. You know, tell us a bit about what, what appeals to you about the idea of toned watercolor paper. What sounds good about that? Why not? Make sure you include your mailing address, because otherwise we can't email you toned watercolor paper. We can only um, mail it to you. So, And it's only available to people in the United States because we're sponsored by Hanamula USA. So we have three of them. So they're, oh, they're seven by nine by seven by nine. Really? They're square. Okay. I didn't know that there was a square one. I will have to get that. Uh, Marta. Loves the idea of toned watercolor paper. Me too. It is nice. And uh, yeah, they also have toned books, which is true. And I'm going to be working on a book today because I don't have a square pad for this. If Joe from Hanamula is in the audience. Joe, we need to talk. I need some more stuff. Um, Erica wants to know if she can mail it. Yeah, mail it to us. P.O.B. 45365. That's four five three six five. Operators are standing by eight five zero six four. Um, Michaela is working in a sushi restaurant. Nice. Yeah, that's interesting. That's a real dilemma. You're probably sick of sushi, so just draw a fish, or better yet, draw a corned beef sandwich. Um, all right. What else? Ah, uh, yes, but there's more. And this is also very exciting. So talking about that toned watercolor paper, unusual. This is truly unusual. And I've been waiting for it for a while. Windsor Newton has brought out these metallic watercolors. Metallic, you say? How's that possible? They're watercolors, and yet they're metallic. You've seen me use metallic ink but you've never seen a grown man using metallic watercolors before. And honestly, up until a couple of days ago, nor had I. And I just got them in, and I'm still blundering my way through them, but there's a lot of very interesting things we can do with them. If you're an urban sketcher, particularly interesting, but even if you're not, they just have a really cool element to them that is fascinating, and you can mix them with regular watercolors and make regular watercolors have... You'll see. We're going to do it. So they just came out. Um, they're, and we're giving away a set. Maybe more than a set? I don't know. We're giving away some of these really cool watercolors. And uh, you can get them. Same deal. Write to us, info at sketchbookschool.com. Give us your U.S. mailing address. And boom. Well, you may win. You may not. Yes. So yes, and um, as a couple of you have pointed out, very nice over dark paper. We're gonna be using it on a light gray, but they also are really nice on black paper. I did some on black paper. Wow, woof, yipes, spectacular. So, and D. Kang has hit 
the fish on the head. Metallic fish. That's what I was thinking, too. In fact, this actually began when we were talking to our friend David Pyle, who is a, a watercolorist and a killer of fish, a fisherman. He goes out into the wild, takes unsuspecting fish, rips them out of the water. I don't know, I think he puts them back in after putting a hook in their mouth. All right, I'm not going off on that tangent right now. But he, but we were talking to him, and we kind of simultaneously came up with this idea of we should paint fish with metallics, right? So that's what we're going to do. It's going to be fun. Now, you don't have metallic watercolor paper, uh, pet, watercolors, I imagine. Don't worry about it. There's all kinds of things you can do. In fact, I wanted to share with this with you. I was looking at Pinterest. Don't look at Pinterest that much, but I decided, you know what? I want to see what kinds of art people make out of fish. Not out of fish, but of fish. I don't think we want to see the art that people make out of fish, but look at how many amazing things there are. So if you're looking for some inspiration and this show is not adequate or not sufficient, go and look at, just look at what other people do. I mean, look, so many... So many cool things, so many cool, imaginative, sometimes slightly creepy um, things. I love those, these kinds of um, deep sea fish. That would be f super cool to do. Should, I, I, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to do that today. I have something a bit more prosaic in mind, but even that, look at that beautiful, those, those red koi with the one black one. Man, that's just so elegant. Beautiful. So anyway, we're not going to steal from anybody else, although it is always good to be inspired to just look at what other people do and say, you know what? Stealing it, you can steal their inspiration. Look at that one of those three fish there. Simple little prints. But some of these like really complex drawings, really beautiful. I've always had this fantasy of getting an actual fish and just throwing it on the drawing table and doing it. But uh, so far I haven't drawing of an actual real fish lying on the table would be super cool yeah okay so lots of lots of cool inspiration and um yeah so let's gather our materials including our coffee and um let's get to it let's get to it um <clears throat> yeah first of all check this out so these are the these are these I think that even the tubes are pretty cool, right? Metallic. And here it is. I've squished, squirted. It also comes in pans or half pans. So you can also do it with half pans. Um, I got my brushes. I'm going to be drawing probably with a pencil. Well, I did get this cool little fountain pen, but we'll talk about that some other time. Just teasing you. So now, oh yeah, I want to show you what I'm thinking in terms of fishes. So... <clears throat> this is where I started thinking. I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to do like a, just a dead f dead fish. Not a dead fish, but like, a, you know, pretty ordinary fish. And I'm still thinking a bit like that. I like the kind of silver nature of this. I think it's it's interesting. And that might be an opportunity to really dig in with these metallics. Um, so he's kind of cool to me. Again, you are free to just go and... Go to Unsplash or some other copyright-free website and pick your own fish or make your own fish up out of your imagination. I'm probably going to do something along those lines. I'm going to start with this basic fish shape. Um, let me just see. Here's another fish. Again, like pretty basic. I just want to look at the kind of overall shape. This one is more, um, you know really a classic fish shape. Like if you were going to doodle a fish, this is probably the shape that you would do. I think it's a sardine. The other guy is a bit fatter, a bit squarer. Again, interesting shape. Um, neither of them has a huge amount of personality, so we're going to have to inject that. They also don't have a lot of interesting fin action. And then I found this guy. And I was like, that, that doesn't really look like a real fish, does it? I mean, it looks like some kind of thing you would see in a movie, like a, a horrific nightmare or something. And so, of course, he's probably the guy who's inspired me the most. So probably what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to, um, you know, a lot of you like Anne Marie are saying, um, I want to draw something beautiful and I'm, I'm down with that. I understand. Please do draw a beautiful tropical fish. If you'd like draw a shark, draw, um, I don't know, a tuna sandwich, whatever you want to draw. But, um, this is kind of where I'm starting and I'm probably going to flip around between these pictures a bit. And then I'm going to, I think just ab abandon them all together and just kind of go in my own direction. But I'll use this, start using this as a, as a starting point. So, all right, let's get rid of this guy. And let's probably get rid of this guy for now. And let's just start in on it. So, um, yeah, so this is the gray paper. Can you see that it's gray? Like this is white. Well, it's not white paper, so it's not that helpful. But this is white paper. See the difference? Gray. So light gray seems appropriate for paint for like um, water, right? So yeah. Um, so I think I'm into this new thing of this. This is a, an eight B pencil, eight B. Not Aunt B from uh, from Mayberry. But 8B, super soft, super soft. So I'm just going to kind of draw a general outline of the sky. It's possible I'll want to draw more than one fish. Let's see. But for now, I'm just going to assume one fish. Assume one fish. And uh, yeah. I could make him more graphic. You know, like it's going to look a little organic the way I'm drawing him. But I don't know. Maybe we'll sharpen him up. I have a brush pen here. I might use that later on to, to kind of sharpen him up. But it's kind of interesting that he has this rear fin here back here. Like it almost looks like a turn indicator, a brake light. And um, the question is, can I capture his expression? Almost certainly I cannot, because it's a really It's almost like this is, it's like a scene in a movie where a guy gets turned into a fish and this is what, it, this is where he is. He's like, oh my God, you know what kind of fish I am. It's fish. But honestly, as you could tell, this is what this thing is all about to me. It's that eye. What an eye. See, one of those guys who lives deep in the ocean, probably. So that was one thing that appealed to me about him, was that eye. And then the other thing that appealed to me about him was, I kind of like the way that his, I like definitely like these little orange touches to his fins. And then I, I liked the kind of bloodshot eye. And then I also liked the, um, he was like an extra, an extra gill. But I liked the fact that his, his, uh, Skin is like, you can definitely tell that there's silver scales on some kind of a darker background. Reminded me a little bit of my dog, because my dog, who maybe you've seen, she is a, a pug and she is tan, a tan dog. She appears tan, but she's not. She's actually black. She has black skin and a black face. And most pugs, or a lot of pugs, are black, all over black, black fur. She has black skin so yeah so i was thinking black skin over a, a tan fur around it so yeah so i'm kind of thinking so i'm going to start not with the metallics but i'm going to start by unnecessarily spraying watercolor onto my page just for the heck of it and now i'm thinking so so here's a 
We'll see if this works, but I have a feeling that it might because this watercolor is surprisingly opaque. It's not gouache, but it's pretty opaque. And so I'm thinking that maybe it will work to have this. We'll see. It's possible I'm ruining it out of the gate. We'll see. If I am, I'll be a wiser man for it. A wiser man with a ruined fish painting. For now, I'm kind of thinking we'll do this business. Not too heavy, but, you know, enough to have something back there underneath whatever's to come. So he's sort of a blue fish. He looks a bit blue. He's blue. He's a fish. He doesn't know why he's a fish. He suddenly realized he was a fish. There he is. So what I really, the reason I'm really doing this is because I want to experiment with a bunch of different things with this. I want to try painting this more opaque watercolor, uh, metallic watercolor on top of dried regular watercolor. Then I want to try mixing it with regular watercolor and then I want to try painting it straight. So for now, I'm just going to let it sit for a second. Shouldn't take much longer. Let me make it put some more water on it. That will help it to dry faster. <laughs> yes. All right. Isn't there some kind of thing about how a fish doesn't rec real doesn't know that it's living in water? Well, this guy isn't living in water. He's living in toned watercolor paper. See, so I've. Thanks to Hanamula, I've already saved myself the trouble of painting this entire page gray. Yeah, so now, you know what? Being impatient and knowing that you're sitting there waiting for me, I'm just going to dampen it down a bit. Because all I really care about is that there's something back here. Something. Let's see. Okay. Here comes the moment of truth. I'm going to take... This, this is... This particular, so I'm, this this color is called pewter. Pewter. And uh, let's just see. So I think I'm just going to do some random scales in pewter. Pewter, 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 pewter. Um, and I'm kind of spacing them far apart because uh, I'm thinking that I'm going to then come in with other colors. And so I want these to be a little random. Now, are you, can you tell already that this is kind of different? That it doesn't quite look like regular watercolor? Yeah. Doesn't this look like gray watercolor? It looks like some extraordinary sent to us from another dimension the dimension of art supply innovation where the art supply laboratories are kept that other dimension where art matters so much that the government invests billions of dollars coming up with new art supplies. Where Congress funds trillions of dollars in landmark research into 
colored pencils that don't break. All right, so here's, so, so far you're looking at it and going, okay, big deal, it's great, check this out. Oh, whoa, right? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Metallic. Not Metallica. We should talk a bit about Metallica. But first, let me talk a little bit about iridescent blue, which is another color here, iridescent blue. So speaking of Metallica, which I'm sure you do a lot. I mean, who doesn't talk about Metallica most of the time? But hopefully you've seen the movie Some Kind of Monster, I think that's what it's called. So Metallica, which in the 90s was an, you know, an incredibly enormous heavy metal band, <laughs> defined heavy metal. And, uh, you know, they did a lot of kind of weird things like suing their fans for illegal downloads and stuff. But they uh, made this documentary over the course of something like two years, which is about them sitting around with their band psychiatrist, not band as in B A W N E D, but the psychiatrist that their band had employed to have group therapy sessions so they could overcome their creative blocks, and uh, make a new album. Anyway, it's kind of interesting. So, yeah. Look at that. All right, so now I'm just kind of squidging it on. Let's see. And I've also only been using cool colors. Let's try and just a little bit of silver. See, it is, it's kind of opaque like gouache, but not really, not entirely. And uh, I'm putting it on really pretty heavily. I could be. I could dilute it more, like regular watercolor. But, you know, you could really do washes and glazes with it if you wanted. Now let's try something else. Let's try taking a little bit of, of just regular old garden variety Windsor Newton professional arts of art uh, watercolor like this, right? Doing that. So here it is. This is like a regular color. And then I could take... Um, I took the silver, mix it in with it, and then it becomes a metallic. Version of whatever that color is, see? So now, it's kind of a pale blue. But it's also, you know, slightly less metallic because, of course, it's somewhat diluted, which is okay. But it still has, a, I think it still has a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a reflective quality to it. We'll see what happens when it's fully dry, but yeah, that's kind of the idea. It seems appropriate for a fish, right? When you think of fish as being... Reflective? Why are they reflective? Is it because they're in the dark? Is that good? Is it good? If you're if you're a fish and you're living in the dark, like I never really understood why why be all those bright colors? Wouldn't it be smarter to be kind of dark and just living in the background? Wouldn't that be safer? Calling attention to yourself? Here you are, a little tiny guy, no teeth, 
or, or very small teeth if you do have teeth. And you go around just like showing off. Ooh, hey, check me out. I'm bright orange and with purple stripes. It just seems like a weird choice. I'm not questioning a fish's right to choose, but it seems like they could have thought a bit more about it. Now I'm just kind of using, I think it's Payne's Gray. It happens to be sitting on my palette. And uh, just trying to put a bit of contrast back there to see how that works. As I mentioned, you can paint with this on black paper. So I sort of could have, I could have painted this whole guy much darker. I kind of chickened out, honestly. If I did this again, I might paint him in Payne's Gray. Partly because it's a great color, but also because it would make this contrast even more intense. How's yours coming along? What are you doing with it? Are you, uh, are you watercoloring? Are you doing one of those black light paintings? On velvet? Now that would be something we should do. Painting like, you know, a tiger or you know, a naked lady or one of those things that people used to do black. Whatever happened to that trend? And please tell me it's not coming back. <laughs> Let's jazz, jazz it up a bit. I'm intrigued by these orange bits, but guess what? I have copper. Whoa, check that out. That is, that's pretty badass. When I first saw this, I was like, eh, is it a little too crafty? But I, I don't think it is. I think, you, I mean, these, these metallics, I saw like, I, was, I think it's because like the first time I ever saw them, there was a big display of somebody who like painted a mobile with different kind of moving shapes and different colors. And I just thought, yeah. Okay, but could you actually like make some, a real painting with them? And... I think I have a lot to learn about how to use this, but I absolutely think you could do cool stuff. And it isn't just the reflectiveness. I think it's also just the boldness of it. Definitely would be cool for urban sketching. So yeah, so this guy might be something. Right, as Feet is pointing out that uh, this fish, which he or she seems to identify with, is uh, has a vacant look. It's true. Why? Because it doesn't have an eye. And I am the person to fix that. But I want to do it in the right way. Um... So I'm going to try mixing a bit of this pewter with a darker color like again, paints gray. So we should get something that's like a dark 
black metallic kind of thing. Oh, he's looking a little bit more like the lights are coming on. I do like that uh, mixture of the black. I thought I was going to use uh, a brush pen, but I don't need to. I can just use more of this watercolor. And uh, keep it all painted. Keep it painted, bro. I do like it when you experiment with something and then you kind of discover something you've never even thought you could do or you would do. You go, oh, wait, that's the solution to this problem. I wasn't even aware that it was a problem. And now, by trying out this thing, it suddenly turned out to be Something I could do. Now, do I have to outline every single one of these godforsaken scales? The thing that attracted me to this, which was that he had these outlined scales, do I now have to draw every single one of them? Of course not. Bob Ross said I can do whatever I want. Never saw Bob Ross paint a fish, did you? No. He was afraid. It's a well-known fact of him. He was like, he said, I don't know if, if I'm ready to go there. Rembrandt? I don't know. I think Picasso may have painted a fish or two. But many artists are, are just not confident enough to go there. So you and I, we are on the vanguard. We are going where not too many artists have gone before. Paul Clay, I think, did a very nice fish painting, as I remember. I think Cezanne may have painted still life with fishes in it. But how many famous fish painters are there, really? Do you know why there aren't that many? Why are there not that many famous fish painters? I'll tell you. Cats don't buy paintings. Notoriously cheap, and they don't support the arts. Only the toy mouse industry. Other than that, no. Not interested. You can't force a fish to provide an underwriting grant to an artist if he doesn't want to. I'm not in love with this body of this fish right now. I'm not in love with your body, I'm afraid. If I can do anything to increase my ardor. I think it's just because they, even though I was waxing enthusiastic about drawing those outlines a second ago. Now they just kind of look, I don't know, it looks like second-rate Paul Chagall. Mark Chagall, excuse me. Maybe it is Paul Chagall. Yeah, it's an original Paul Chagall. Uh, wasn't his name Mark? Uh, yeah, this is his not very talented brother. Mark 
All right. Now, I just realized another thing, which is I was behaving as if this paper was white. Right? So like the highlights in his eye, that's, I didn't paint them thinking, oh, I, don't, I should leave those blank because they're highlights. But of course, that's inaccurate because they can be white. So I think I'm going to bring in a little bit of my crusty old thing of white gouache. see how it works on this tone paper because we could even do this right we can do that because it's because we have the power and we have the gouache and we have the tone paper so now it's kind of like he's he just found himself in a in a cocktail, <laughs> he just found himself in a in a glass of soda, just to add to his indignity. But also, how about putting some highlights on this top of him? Shows you that you know he's kind of near the surface. He doesn't know it, but he's kind of near the surface. Some light coming from above. Now I can put that white gouache on top of the, the various metal things. Maybe it gives it a bit more of a highlight. Yeah. You know, it's always a bit difficult coming on and talking to you about something brand new because I, I'm i new to it too. And uh, I want to try and figure out how to make it work, but it takes, it takes a bit of doing because this is virtually a new medium, really. It's really, it's, it's a whole new thing. And I think there's a lot of cool things you could do with it. And uh, I'm not sure that I've dem demonstrated one of them yet, but it's still interesting. It's interesting to think about. So, yes, yeah, somebody's pointing out that he looks happier than uh, the one in the photo. It's true. Yeah, he's happy. Happy as a fish. Why do I have to commemorate his misery? <sighs> nice job, says Nip Betty. Nice job. I do have a nice job. Strangely, this is part of it. So there, the beginning of this fish. I'm going to continue working on this for the next few days. This is just an initial study. So I'm going to do a, <laughs> I'm going to do a much better version of this when you're not around. So, yeah. So if you're thinking, you know what? My drawing is a hell of a lot better than his is. <laughs> just wait. I'll be back. And when I am... I'll say, oh, I should have I should have trusted that he would blow me away with his fish. <laughs> Speaking of fish, isn't there's that band fish? Are you a fan of, of Fish the Band? I understand that they're on tour again. I think I've ever heard any of their music. But uh, you know. I guess a lot of people like them. They're a jam band, fish jam. Not a very appealing combination. Yeah, my wife is uh, not a fan of fish. Not a fish fan. So, anyway, let's put the fish away, as they say in the song. Is there a song like that? 
So, um, yeah. Let's pack it in, packing away the fish. I did do, um, I was doing some experiments with it. Do I have them around? No. I was swatching, as one will do. You get, a, you get some kind of a new art supply. What's the first thing you do? Swatching. Make a bunch of swatches. And, uh, yeah. Jen likes fishbone. 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 You know, there's actually an artist whose work is worth looking at named Jeremy Fish. Have you ever heard of him? Jeremy Fish. Uh, I, my son and I used to be obsessed with Jeremy Fish. I was Googling him and seeing he's now like an official artist for um, the city of San Francisco. If you've never looked at Jeremy Fish, I, he also has a majestic beard. Let me, see, let me show you one picture of him. And, oh, here's a picture. Of, I'm going to show you a picture of Jeremy Fish with a drawing of a fish, right? See, there, that's Jeremy Fish. That's a hell of a beard. And look at that wood shirt that he's wearing. And then he has this, uh, this is the kind of drawing that he does. They're pretty cool. They're really, I think he, and there's a kind of a telephone made out of a quail and a bear. That might be a self-portrait. Yeah, he's cool. I like this guy a lot. We used to have a poster in our house, in Jack's room, in fact, of him, of uh, by Jeremy Fish. So um, check him out, Jeremy Fish. So let's see. Um, tomorrow, I am. Is it tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow I'm flying to Los Angeles. Going to spend the weekend there. So I'm going to go on a plane, which is always fun. And uh, shortly, it's a short ride. And then uh, I'm going to spend the weekend with my boy who just had his birthday yesterday. So if you're watching this, Jack, happy birthday. Well, you're probably not watching him because you're at the beach and your birthday was yesterday. But I've already told you that. Um, Grace wants to know the difference between Metallica and Metallic. Metallica, go to Spotify and type in Metallica. Click on um, Greatest Hits, listen to three songs. Then go and Google the word Metallic. I think you will find a far superior answer than I could provide. Jaseep Singh Faridkot, thank you for joining us. No apologies necessary. We just finished drawing fish. Unfortunately, we're done. Um, Myrna learned a lot about fish. <laughs> really? Not from me, I hope. Uh, <clears throat> yes. Tony Foster. Yes. I, Tony Foster is is uh, really in, an interesting artist. Did some beautiful travel journals. How he manages to draw underwater, I don't know. Waterproof paper, maybe? Probably. I don't know. So, all right. Well, thank you all for joining me. Thanks for being here. And uh, I hope you had a chance to draw today. If you didn't, just do it. Just draw a fish. Hate it, throw it away. Love it, take a picture of it, and post it on, I don't know, Facebook, Instagram. What are we going to do when Facebook and Instagram collapse, as I think that they might one day? can't say I'll be sorry. What are we going to do then? We're going to have to go back to showing each other our sketchbooks in real life, but we'll be able to because the pandemic will be over and everything will be wonderful again. All right. So a couple of final comments. Again, if you would like to sample these watercolors or this toned watercolor paper from Hanamula, um, Write to us, and we'll see what we can do. 
And if you do want to share your fish, I hope you do, because I would love to see 100 fish swim by the camera next week, right? It'd be super cool. Um, then uh, share them on social media. Don't email them to me. People email them to me, and we have a whole process. So if you must email them to me, sigh. But really, it would be better if you share them in the schoolyard, on Facebook, on Instagram, hashtag SBS Draw With Me. The Art for All podcast is, we're getting ready to do a new season. It'll probably be a couple more weeks, but it will be back with uh, me and my friend Jack Laws, John Muir Laws. Um, and we're also going to, we have a new format that's going to be pretty cool. Um, so, okay, Erica has no social media. You know what? Just do whatever you need to do. I don't know. I sort of understand not having social media, but not entirely. Um, and what else? Danny'sEssays.com. You know, more and more people are signing up for this these essays. I, I'm not complaining, but it's good. And I'm sending one out tomorrow. And it's, oh, the essay I'm sending out tomorrow, I, th I think it's one of my favorites. It's really pretty good. If you want to get it, go to Danny'sEssays.com, sign up. It's free. It's free. Because everything of value is free. It's free. Sign up for it, and I'll send it to you. And um, subscribe to this channel. Also free. Also free. Think of all the free stuff you've gotten. Free dad jokes. Potentially free metallic watercolors. Potentially free tone of schedule paper. Watercolor paper. Potentially free podcast. Potentially free dannysessays.com. Definitely free YouTube subscription. It's a miraculous time we live in. It really is. And uh, let's hope it continues into next week when we meet again and do something even more exciting than painting a fish. And next week I'm going to do something really good. I'm going to do the thing I originally planned to do. I should never have agreed to draw a fish. Okay. Anyway, thank you. Just Deep says there are no free lunches. I don't know, Just Deep. I don't know. I wouldn't mind a free lunch. If you have if you have some lunch that you would like to mail to me, we provide you with our our post office box. Feel free to send sandwiches, buffets, whatever you like. And I'll see you next week. Have a great week. Have fun drawing and uh, share. Bye bye.